Hey everyone, Kachi Mr. back to our earnings video for today. So Amazon completely obliterated the estimate. Great quarter, great call from the company as well. We've got a lot of extra information during that call, so I'm going to touch on a couple of points that were made there. Now, for this quarter, of course, there were a lot of questions with regards to growth, stabilization, with regards to AWS, Amazon Web Services, especially after Microsoft had very good results, but Google saw a bit of a slowdown, which is also why Google crashed over 10% or so the other day. So Amazon delivered on the goods. It's becoming more and more profitable as well. Those of you that have been following Amazon for a while, you know that the operating leverage for that company was extremely high. And it was just a matter of when, not if, they can become extremely profitable. So let's start with net sales. Overall, it's up 13% year over year. Of course, the majority comes from North America. Then we've got 23% here from international and 16% from AWS. With regards to operating income, I mean, lovely graph, right? We were at $2.5 billion in Q3 2022. We're now at $11.18 billion. That's up 343% year over year. And the same thing here for net income, that's up 244% year over year to $9.87 billion. Now, as for the segment results, so first up, North America sales were up 11% year over year. Operating income continues to increase. Last year, we were at a loss of $412 million. We're now at a profit of $4.3 billion. And they say here, trailing 12 months net sales of $340.7 billion and the trailing 12 months operating income of $8.2 billion. Of course, expect that number to become much bigger over time. As for the international one, it's still unprofitable, but you can see that we are seeing major improvements here as well. It's down 96%. We're very close to being break even on the international segment, and that increased 16% year over year with regards to net sales. Then as for AWS, it increased 12% year over year. So basically quarter over quarter, we're not really seeing so much reacceleration of growth because last quarter it also increased 12%, but Operating income is much better. It's up 29% year over year to $6.97 billion. And the trailing 12 months here for AWS is $87.8 .8 billion, operating income of $22.7 billion. And now they're on an annual run rate, revenue run rate of around $92 billion. More on that a bit later on. Then as for free cash flow, this is trailing 12 months, $21.43 billion. Long-term goal, optimize free cash flows. That way they could, if their stock is extremely cheap, they could buy back more shares and reduce the dilution. Now, with regards to free cash flow, if you are surprised, well, you should not really be surprised because if you've been following operating cash flow for a while, you can clearly see that it has been going up quarter after quarter for quite a while. Yes, free cash flow, this is again trailing 12 months has become positive in Q2, but you see that huge increase in Q3. So even if you go quarter by quarter, this company is becoming extremely profitable. Now, with regards to the other segments, physical stores, that was up 6% year over year. Third-party seller services keeps increasing quite nicely, 20% year over year. Subscription services, 14%. Advertising still, I mean, this business is actually pretty remarkable. It still grows 26% despite all the headwinds, despite the challenging macro environment that we've seen with other companies. Amazon is still able to grow that business 26% year over year. And it's not a small base, right? They're now at $12 billion. So here again, they're in a run rate of close to $50 billion for that business. Pretty remarkable. AWS, as we've seen before, this is two quarters of 12% growth, but it's great to see that it is stabilizing and not going lower. Then if we look at total operating expenses, yes, overall we are up year over year, but you can see already some improvements. GNA is down year over year. Sales and marketing is down as well. Technology and infrastructure that has increased a little bit, but overall, overall operating income, a big, big improvement there. Then with regards to the guidance, so net sales are expected to be between 160 and 167 billion dollars or grow between 7 to 12 percent compared to the fourth quarter in 2022. Operating income to be between 7 and 11 billion dollars compared to 2.7 billion dollars in the fourth quarter. When of course, I almost forgot, 
The, with regards to net income, third quarter net income includes a pre-tax valuation gain of $1.2 billion included in non-operating income expense from the common stock investment in Rivian. This is basically a bit more than what it was last year. Last year, $1.1 billion from that investment. So it's safe to say that this was a very good print by Amazon. And yes, despite the high valuation, I think this is still one of the best companies around to invest in. Now, of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. We're very close to reach 30,000 subscribers, so thank you very much for all the support. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and help me comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. Now, quick look here at a couple of valuation metrics. Of course, this still needs to be updated a little bit. We'll probably be updating it on Friday. Forward PE is now a bit closer to 32 times, not 37 times after these earnings. So yes, we are going down. We are becoming much more profitable. So forward PE should reflect that. As for the rest here, price to free cash flow, expect a big decline here in the coming quarters. And so overall, yes, we are much cheaper today than what we were in the last five years. Now, with regards to the earnings call, I want to touch on what they said at the very start of the call with regards to AWS. So we're seeing the pace and volume of closed deals pick up and we're encouraged by the strong last couple of months of new deals signed. For perspective, we signed several new deals in September with an effective date in October that won't show up in any gap reported numbers for Q3, but the collection of which is higher than our total reported deal volume for all of Q3. This is huge. Of course, you will only see these results over a longer period of time. You're not going to see this in one print just like that. But hey, this is big, big news. Then remember I told you they have a $92 billion revenue run rate business for AWS, but where 90% of the global IT spend still resides on-prem. And if you believe like they do, that equation is going to flip, there's a lot more there for us. I mean, it's true. I mean, imagine, let's say not even all of it. Imagine it goes 50-50 and Amazon Web Services still remains the biggest one out there. Expect that $92 billion today to look extremely small in the long-term future. They continue by saying here, and then you look at the very substantial, gigantic new generative AI opportunity, which I believe will be tens of billions of dollars of revenue for AWS over the next several years. Now, there was also a question with regards to the margin improvements with regards to AWS. So Brian here answered, yes, the margin improved 600 basis points quarter over quarter, an increase of income of $1.6 billion quarter over quarter. And that's driven primarily by their headcount reduction in Q2 and also continued slowness in hiring, rehiring open positions. They also talk about natural gas prices and other energy costs have come down a bit in Q3 as well. But here's the caution. As we've said historically, the margins on the operating margin for AWS is going to fluctuate quarter to quarter. And this is a good example of that. Basically preparing us if Q4 is not as good as Q3. These are some of the variables that you have to take into consideration. The last thing here is the graph. Of course, before the reported earnings, we were just under $120. This is, has not been a great week, but not just for Amazon for every other company out there as well. Now we're back over $125, which is an area where we've been since, well, the end of September, each and every week, we were bouncing over that $125 area. RSI is now at 40, 44 or so, so pretty neutral. So overall, great print by Amazon, good information given on the call with regards to advertising, AWS, again, advertising, it's a high margin business and it's still growing extremely fast despite all the challenges that we're experiencing in this market, especially if you hear what Meta said, what Google said, I mean, Snapchat, et cetera, et cetera. It's not an easy market right now, but Amazon is extremely well positioned and that's why you see this business already being a $50 billion revenue business a year and growing quite fast. Amazon, in my opinion, of course, I'm biased. It's my second largest position. It's one of the best companies to own for the future. In my opinion, yes, if you look at traditional metrics, it's still not as cheap as you would like it to be. But if you look at the improvements in the last two to three quarters, I mean, they'll catch up 
to that valuation pretty fast. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.